The very first version of Photoshop released in 1990 had already several adjustments like curves, levels, hue saturation and color balance. One of the main reasons why Photoshop became so successful and popular is thanks to these features. In this video, I will show you five less known but incredibly useful techniques you can do with adjustments. In the composition that I'm going to use for this tutorial, I have four layer groups. I have the text in one, I have small triangles, these are all vector shapes in another one. I have some background triangles as well, which I wanted to have behind the image. And then I have the main image itself, which is also broken up into a couple of different layers because I'm using these triangles as holding devices and I am using clipping masks to have the images cropped into the triangles. So for example, if I remove the clipping mask here on the bottom by holding down Alt or Option key on the keyboard and clicking between the two layers, you can see the image will come out of that frame. And when I do it again with the same shortcut, I can clip it back in. The original background of this photo is blue. So it's a quite easy image to work with. There's not much distracting colors in the background. And the first tip I wanted to show you about adjustment layers is a clipping mask technique, but not in the usual way you would see them being used. So just showing you, if I add an adjustment layer, and in this case, just to make sure you can see it, I'm going to use black and white. When I add that in the image and I put it all the way to the top, so on top of everything, then obviously it's going to affect all the layers in my composition. But if I move it further down, let's just say I put it here above the main image, then the small triangles and the title is not affected, so they can stay in color. So that's just the simple basic hierarchy of the layers and how adjustment layers work. But when I move it into one of these clipping groups that I created, let's say place it under this layer, you see it automatically becomes also clipped onto that triangle. We will only see its effect if I also move it above the image. And now we can see that this triangle here in the middle is turned black and white because of this adjustment layer. The cool thing though is that you can also use clipping on adjustment layers and clip them directly onto a full layer group. And this is something you might not be familiar with. So if I place it here just above the main image and I use Alt or Option click between them, then you will see an underline showing up just underneath the group's name. And that means that now the adjustment layer is clipped onto the whole group. So this is still very useful because it means that the background layer group, which is these few triangles behind it, are still going to be in color and only this selected layer group is affected by the adjustment. There is also another way to limit the effect of an adjustment layer to a layer group. So you can do it with a clipping mask as we've seen it already, or you can place the adjustment into the layer group at the top usually of the layer group, but notice how it is still affecting those two triangles in the background. So these two triangles in the background should be in color, but because by default a layer group is set to pass through blend mode, it means whatever adjustment layer you place inside it, it will automatically pass through and affect all the layers or layer groups underneath. But if you change the blend mode to normal, see immediately we get the preview in the blend modes, but we can also see once it, the blend mode of the layer group is set to normal, it will restrict the effect of the adjustment layers inside it. So it will hold it inside the main image layer group in this case. Another really cool technique is that you can use adjustments non-destructively, not only as adjustment layers, but also as smart filters. It pretty much does the same thing, but it's connected more to the layer itself. So instead of introducing another layer, you just use the adjustment as a filter, but it's important that the layer has to be a smart object. 
So for example, in this case, this center triangle that we have here with the image, you can see the image itself is already a smart object. So that means if I go into image adjustments and use something like hue saturation, which is control or command U, with the shortcut. So once I select that and I start changing the hue around, you can see once I click OK, it will be added as a smart filter. And any of the adjustments available from here, you can use as smart filters, even including things like shadow highlights and HDR toning. So this is just another way of using adjustments non-destructively, again, meaning that you can turn them on and off easily from the layers panel. And you can also double click on them to make changes to the effect. And what's also cool is that you can double click on this little icon here. So when you use an adjustment as a smart filter, you can even access the blend mode directly for the adjustment or what's in this case is a smart filter. So if I want to use this maybe with overlay, it will again change slightly the effect. But of course, we can go through this list and we can see the various effects that we can achieve. When you want to completely get rid of a smart filter, all you have to do is to just right click and choose delete smart filter. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. Another technique that a lot of Photoshop users are not aware of is the targeted adjustment tool, which you can find in some of the adjustments. So again, for example, if we add the hue saturation, that's one of a good example where we can find this. Now I placed it all the way on the top of this composition. So whatever I'm going to do will affect the whole composition. And we know that in the properties panel, you can drag left and right to change these values. Unfortunately, you can't just double click on them still to reset them like you would do in Lightroom. I hope they will add that functionality into Photoshop soon, but we are just going to reset it for now with this icon. And what I would like to show you is this tool. So that's the one called targeted adjustment tool. Once you select that, you can click and drag on colors. And in this case, it's going to desaturate if I drag left or saturate those colors if I drag right. So it specifically finds that range of colors. You can see already here it shows the range. If I click on blue and start dragging it, that's going to automatically show that other range that's been selected. This just makes it much easier because you don't have to search for them by going into these various ranges of colors it does it for you automatically. So it finds the specific range that you want to make changes to, and then you can keep increasing or decreasing the saturation simply by dragging left and right. But what's even better is that you can also access the hue of those colors by holding down command or control while dragging. So still using the targeted adjustment tool, I can click and drag to the left by holding down command or control key, this is going to change the hue, as you can see. And we can find another color as well, maybe this. And again, we can start making those changes. So that's a really useful time saver that I use constantly. And it's worth mentioning that you can find this little hand icon, so the targeted adjustment tool in several of the adjustment layers. And another bonus shortcut tip, if you hold down the Alt or Option key while using the targeted adjustment tool, you can make the changes more subtle. So it slows down the changes. You can see the saturation is moving much slower left and right. Then if I let go Alt, you see it moves much faster. So you can be more precise by holding down the Alt or Option key. 
And last but not least, it's also worth mentioning, if you are using a lot of adjustment layers, you can very quickly find them, all of them in your composition, even if you have them hidden inside layer groups, by using filtering. And all you have to do is to make sure you have the kind option selected here on the top of the layers panel, and then you click on the little circle icon, which represents adjustment layers. And then immediately you can see all of them, and you can even disable them all quickly by just dragging over the eye icons, if you want to see your composition without any adjustment layers. And once you're done filtering your layers, just remember to click on the little red icon here on the top right, which will take you back and show you all your layers in your composition. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.